The debate on genetically modified organisms was recently reignited after President Yori Museveni refused to give his assent to the National Biosafety Act of 2017. The various debates also show that most Ugandans have a generally negative attitude towards GMOs and they also mostly refer to them in the context of agriculture. Many are unaware of the role GMOs play in other aspects of their lives, such as treatment of diseases and the manufacture of medicines. Dr. Ambrose Agona is the Director General of the National Agricultural Research Organization, NARO. He says that GMOs are already a part of many Ugandans' lives. Dr. Agona says every Ugandan who has been immunized and vaccinated against any disease has been exposed to genetically modified organisms. Our parents are told to embrace actually vaccination, immunization actually programs, and the moment actually you are vaccinated against actually TB for instance, to make you more resilient in an environment, you become genetically modified. According to Dr. Agona, the modern biomedical science of making vaccines relies on the same molecular biology tools that are used to create genetically modified organisms. It is against this background that agricultural scientists in Uganda found it necessary to apply the same methods of crop and animal husbandry in order to increase disease resistance, enhance crop yields, and improve nutritional content. And similarly, if you're talking about a crop, we're using the approach also to make them resilient against the pest, the, the, the diseases, the drought, and so on. You could have heard about the bacillus thuringiensis which is very important actually in controlling the stem borers in maize and is being widely used in, actually in, in, uh, in India to control American bollworm. This is also like available in the soil and the organic farmers actually isolate and then just spray. Dr. Agona says Uganda has already made milestones in identifying a gene from the green paper that will be used to fight the banana bacterial wield. I'd like to submit we identified a gene from the green paper and the moment we did that gene transfer from the green pepper to the banana clay genome, at the end of the day, we are seeing very good and positive results. The bananas that are carried the gene from the green pepper that we eat, from the experiments that we have been doing, the trials in Kawanda and in other locations, they are 100% resistant to the banana bacterial wilt. However, the science Dr. Agona is referring to will remain confined and not fully utilized until a law prescribing its safety application is in place. The genetically modified, we have them. But we've been doing them under confined field trials. The National Biosafety Act, which was passed by Parliament last year, was meant to address some of the concerns raised by people, like Dr. Agona, but the president refused to assent to it, citing some of the misgivings he had with specific clauses. And nobody is saying Uganda should open up its door to all the GMOs. In fact, in order to answer that question, Uganda should have this biosafety bill in place so that our children who are at university now studying biotechnology can graduate uh, do, go do their higher learning, masters and, and their PhDs, so that if and when we want that question answered, we do not go to Bazungus to ask. We ask our children. Bufumbira East Member of Parliament, Dr. James Nsababoturo, is one of the legislators against the passing of what has come to be known as GMO Bill. And we are asking Ugandan scientists, how on earth do you support GMOs when your counterparts with modern facilities, better resourced, better advanced in many ways, are saying no to GMOs. And uh, we are going to continue from where we ended by opposing it, by saying this bill should not even be discussed. Now, while the, the clever students are, are turning out to be doctors and agriculturists and uh, biotechnology, biotechnologists, those who used to come at the end of the class are the RDCs and the politicians. So it is payback time and it is really demoralizing. Many people are feeling it. They can't say it because they still need the money from the government. The president is concerned about the protection of indigenous crops and animals, but agricultural scientists say his concerns were addressed even before the enactment of the bill. We have been able actually to collect close about 5 to 10 percent of our local indigenous crops and we are storing them in the gene banks. 
And as the debate on GMOs rages on, scientists believe politicians have hijacked their role, and this might stifle scientific innovations that the country needs for it to transition to a middle-income country by 2020. Jingo Francis, NTV, Weekend Edition.